everyone, it is no secret that I love editing photos and I think editing the photo is just as important as the process of taking the photo to create your final piece of work. So today I want to share with you my top 10 tips when it comes to editing your portrait photography. I'm going to share tips on things to look out for, new techniques you can try and how to make your portrait stand out with editing. I'm going to be using a few different programs too as you can apply most of these techniques to any editing software that you prefer to use. So before I touch the curves tool or start changing any of the colors in my photo, the first thing I always do is look at my cropping. Cropping can play a huge part in how powerful your image is and I think can be a slightly underrated tool when it comes to editing portraits. While it's important to try and get your composition right in camera at the actual photo shoot, working with people and hand holding your camera means that not everything is always going to be perfect. I love capturing lots of movement during my photo shoots and while I try to keep my composition that I want, sometimes it can start slipping or my subject moves in a way I wasn't expecting and that will leave me with images that I need to crop. For my personal style of portraits, I love center cropping. I like to bring up the crop tool so I can see the grid overlay to make sure my subject is in the middle. I also like to crop into my photo if there is a little too much negative space for my liking. I think portraits stand out more when they are cropped in a little tighter. The next tool I like to use are my tonal tools and there are two ways you can do this. First is by using the basics panel or you can also adjust tones by using the tonal curve. I always start with the basics panel though to even out the exposure and lighting in the frame. For example, for my backlit photos, I typically like to take them slightly underexposed to save some of the details in the highlights. Then in editing, I like to bring up my shadows and exposure a little bit to brighten my subject. I'll then bring down the highlights to bring back that detail in the brightest spots of the image. And finally, I'll bring down my black slider to add some more contrast back into the image. Here's a before and after of just my basic tonal adjustments. The main aim when using this tool is to balance the light in your image to give you a good base to work with for the rest of your editing. And that brings us to curves where you can further tweak the lighting in your photo. And I like to see using curves as a way to add the style to your photo. So look, I still love matting my blacks in my photo editing. I used to do it a lot more in my older work and have since toned it down a little bit, but I still really love this effect for my photos. To do this, I like to create an S curve. The easiest way to do this is to put down three points in each area and then create an S shape. This will deepen the shadows by pulling down and this point will brighten the subject when pulling it up. I like to move each point a little bit at a time and slowly tweak the curve until I'm happy with the results. And let me know if you'd like to see a whole video about the curves panel, including the RGB channels in curves too. If you want to learn a new skill or expand on your current skills, Skillshare, who is the sponsor of today's video, is the perfect place to do that. And they're giving you a one month free trial when you use the link in my description. Skillshare have in-depth classes on so many topics from creative writing, illustration, video marketing, and heaps more. I recently watched the Creative Portrait Photography Plan, Shoot, and Edit Original Portraits, which takes you through the entire process of a photo shoot from beginning to end with lots of insightful tips to help Help improve your photography. If you want to watch this class or learn new skills, then the first 1,000 people to click on the link in my description will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. Moving on to color. White balance makes a huge difference in what your portrait looks like, especially if you're delivering quite natural looking images with minimal editing to your client. For example, we can take this photo here that was shot in dappled light. I was using auto white balance for this photo because I took it for a camera review of the Sony A7CR. I'll leave that review linked down below if you want to see the rest of the behind the scenes of this photo shoot. I noticed white balance was really tricky for the camera to find. This photo is a little too cool and even a little too pink for my liking, so Yasmin doesn't really stand out here. I'm going to warm it up with the temperature slider and also bring the pinks down with the tint slider and here's a before and after. This image looks so much better with just those two settings adjusted. Tip number five is to keep an eye on your skin tones. There are so many ways you can edit the color of your photo, whether it's through RGB curves or using the HSL panel or my favorite by using the color grading panel. But I won't be going through all of that today. If you want some editing tutorials or ideas on how to color your images, I have 
have a whole photo editing playlist I'll leave linked in the description where I take you through all the steps one by one. Today's tip when it comes to coloring your portraits is to keep skin tones in mind. Skin tones are so important in portrait photography. And you know me, I love coloring my photos and doing all sorts of fun things to the colors, but I always have to keep my subject's skin tone in mind to make sure I don't end up making them look like an alien. The way you can do this is by going to the orange and red hue slider in HSL, which are the two colors usually responsible for skin tones. You can also click on this button here and then click on the color you want to adjust directly on your photo and drag up and down to change the hue that way instead if you're not sure which slider to use. Something that's just as important as skin tones to keep in mind while you're editing portraits are the eyes of the subject. And there are a couple of tips I have here. The first is when you're adjusting the tones and colors of your photos, make sure it's not affecting the eyes of your subject. For example, when using the tone curve, if you are a little heavy handed, it can really start affecting the light on someone's face. So make sure you keep checking the before and after while you're editing to make sure you haven't taken your editing too far. The second tip is if the eyes are not standing out as much as you would like them to, you can also use the brush tool to bring out more color and bring in more light. You can select the brush tool in Lightroom and then select the iris enhance preset. Zoom into your image and paint across both irises to enhance the colors. I also like adjusting the white balance to make the iris match what they look like in real life too, as sometimes the location you're shooting in can make them appear slightly different. Next, we have sharpening. And to be honest, I used to sharpen my photos a lot more in the past, probably because my lenses weren't as sharp as they are nowadays. But regardless, I still love sharpening my photos to bring out all the details. A little trick in Lightroom is that once you bring up the sharpening, you can hold down the option key and bring up the masking slider, which will only sharpen specific parts of your image. In Luminar Neo, you have the option to sharpen small, medium, and large details, as well as the overall image. Tip number eight is retouching. And I personally love retouching my images because I feel like it gives my portraits that final, finished look. I don't retouch every type of photo shoot in the same way though. For example, a wedding or an e-commerce photo shoot where you are delivering up to or around a thousand images, I won't do any intricate skin retouching. Instead, I will only do a color and crop edit. But for portrait photo shoots or fashion editorials where you are delivering a smaller amount of images, say a set of 10 final images, then I will do more intricate skin retouching. And I have a beginning to end skin retouching tutorial you can watch and follow along with on my channel, I'll leave it linked for you. The second last thing I think is so important to keep an eye on when editing portraits are color casts. You will usually find color casts when shooting in very vibrant locations. The most common one you'll see is a yellow or a green cast in someone's skin from shooting in parks. Another interesting one you might come across is if you're taking portraits of someone with blonde hair in a shady location, their hair might have a blue cast to it. To fix that, I create a new blank layer in Photoshop and set the layer blending mode to color. Then I take the correct color and brush over the area with a low opacity brush. The last thing I do to all my portraits when I'm editing is take a final look at the overall image to see if there are any distracting elements that take away from the portrait. This could be absolutely anything from bugs, strands of hair, leaves, discoloration in nature in the background, or maybe even a person walking in the background. If I see anything that takes my eye away from the portrait, I like to get rid of it from my image. In Lightroom, you can use the Spot Healing Brush. In Lumina Neo, you can use the Erase Tool. Or if it's in a tricky spot with lots of texture, you can also move into Photoshop and use more hands-on tools to remove it. Let me know which one was your favorite tip in the comments below that you'll use next time you're editing a portrait session. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.